Take Back Your Health Now, Episode 51. You're listening to the Take Back Your Health Now podcast, the show that interviews the top doctors, athletes, trainers, and entrepreneurs to help you find the holy grail of health. Now here's your host, Dr. Dan Margolin. Dr. Dan Margolin with another segment of Take Back Your Health Now, where we pull out all the stops in search of health's holy grail. We are very excited to have Dr. Jonathan Spages. Uh, Dr. Spages specializes in functional medicine and is uniquely skilled at working with the root physiological, biochemical, and hormonal imbalances associated with type 2 di- diabetes and hypothyroidism, as well as many other chronic illnesses. He has broken free from the limiting approach of a standard of care that provides drugs and hormones as its treatment. Dr. Spages is able to uncover the hidden causes of why a person may be experiences the diseases of diabetes and hypothyroidism. Dr. Spages also takes great pride in delivering personalized health care for diabetics and women suffering from hypothyroidism. In addition, providing an environment that supports and inspires patients. Dr. Spages, welcome to the show, sir. Hey, thanks a lot, Dr. Dan. I appreciate it. No, it's great having you on. So just give us an idea. So what, like, how did you first get involved in uh, one, in the practice of medicine, and then two, like sort of going towards diabetes? You know, that's a great question. So I originally had a series of patients I was working with that were dealing with diabetes. And I have a very personal connection to this topic because my grandmother um, just didn't do well with this disease uh, before I became a doctor where, you know, she had, um, you know, multiple strokes and heart attacks. And my great grandmother, unfortunately, went blind and lost one of her legs because of this disease. So I had a big passion, but I was really um, unsuccessful with helping uh, people achieve any sort of um, uh, improvements on this condition. I was told, you know, once you're a diabetic, you're always a diabetic and nothing can be done about it. And um, I uncovered um, a methodology called functional medicine, which is basically the science of finding the root causes of disease. And in doing so, um, I, I took up a lot of studying. I mean, a lot of studying to figure out what exactly could um, could help these patients who are uh, diabetic? What is exactly underneath this particular disease? Because there was research showing that you could have reversed the disease, just no one knew about it. Huh. So essentially um, what I did was I had patients under my care that I said, well, you know, once I studied this particular functional medicine uh, training, I said, well, let's try, let's try this natural approach to figuring out if we could really get to the cause of their, their problems. And upon doing so, it was pretty miraculous. One person after another after another was lessening their needs of medication across the board, losing weight without exercise, uh, gaining tons of energy. And um, I was like, oh my God, I'm onto something here. And uh, it's been pretty phenomenal. Our, Our success rate is through the roof. We rarely see someone fail. And that is because we just take a completely different approach to addressing this disease that uh, believe it or not, many people aren't really familiar with. So um, it, it, it came about by a matter of frustration. So, so do you find, I mean, this is something that I've seen and I've gone to many, many seminars with podiatrists where they're, where they're talking about an increase in the number of patients with diabetes, not simply because the population is increasing, but just percentage wise, there's just there's dramatic increases. Is that, is that true? Is that what you noticed? Yeah. I mean, uh, the CDC, the Centers of Disease Control, states that one in 10 Americans um, have diabetes. I've seen some studies suggesting that, um, you know, by uh, by 2020, we're going to find that 50, 50 percent of the population will have diabetes, which, um, in my opinion, in the United States is embarrassing. I mean, it shouldn't I mean, even it doesn't make any sense. Why would we have that many? Now, now let me ask you a question. What from a blood study, right? It's diagnosed that there's a, a sugar level. Now, it used to be uh, at a certain level, like 120 or something like that. What is yep. it now? Has that changed? Has that? I, I did notice that people were coming in saying they were diabetic, and I noticed that their blood sugar levels were, were lower at one point. Is some of that because they've changed the criteria for diabetes or not necessarily? Wow, that's a phenomenal question, and I don't hear that often. And, and let me tell you, you're absolutely onto something there because – the physiological range, meaning the healthy range for blood sugar, um, based on functional journals, meaning that these are the journals which show normals, not just a lab value. 
Um, the blood sugar level should be between 85 to 99 with no medication for a human being on this planet. So 85 to 99 is the healthy levels. However, um, what happens is labs use averages. So if someone decides to go to a lab and let's say everybody who goes to that lab or a large population of people that go to that lab have higher numbers, their averages would be different. Um, to be clinically diagnosed as a diabetic, uh, your blood sugar level has to be over 126 and your A1C, which is kind of like the marking period grade for your blood sugar, has to be over 6.5 before someone technically diagnoses you as a diabetic. So the, a, the A1C, just for the listeners, that's really like, a, it's measuring uh, long-term how your sugar levels had been for several months, where the other one where you're talking about 126 is on a daily basis, what that level is, right? Okay. That's correct. And it's kind of funny because um, a long time ago, uh, the way it used to, you know, uh, patients used to interact with diabetes is they would be kind of a bad boy or a bad girl for a while, but knew that they were gonna see their doctor the next week or so. And they said, heck, I'm gonna go see my doctor. Let me make sure I stay away from all the, you know, the junk food and the sugar and the sweets. So <laughs> the doctor checks for the number, it looks good. I'm not on more medication, I'm not on insulin. And thus, uh, you know, they're getting a clean bill of health, quote unquote. Or the A1C kind of sees how they're doing over a period of time, like you mentioned, where, you know, you can see if they have been cheating over the last number of weeks. So uh, they have to be a, a, a better boy or girl over that period of time. Wow, that is crazy. Um, I, I can imagine them doing that. Um, so what, when you look at diabetes and you say, well, there is definitely this increase, one in 10, what's the reason? Uh, what's, what's the reason, Jonathan? Why do you think it is like that? I think, um, I think there's a number of factors. Um, number one is I think we have more of a, um, a polluted uh, food system in terms of genetically modified foods. I think the stress level of many people is a lot higher. Uh, they have higher demands now that they have more bills. Um, you know, the baby boomer generation is, is producing a lot of children that are unemployed, so it's putting a stress. Um, I also think that, um, you know, unfortunately, we're in a go, go, go society too, where there's a high incidence of people who are, you know, taking a lot of caffeine and they're at the Starbucks or the Dunkin' Donuts or the other branded coffees and, and they're pushing to try to just live a stressful or a, a de-stressful life, but it's a very stressful life. So I think that's a big component. Um, under functional medicine and the approach that I take, I do find that there are a number of reasons why the body goes out of balance after they go through that stress. Like what would they, what do you mean? Well, there are four organs in the body that control blood sugar levels. Um, these are the same organs that even control Jesus and all these other people throughout time. And those organs are the liver, the pancreas, the thyroid, and the adrenal glands. And essentially, in order for someone to be a diabetic, meaning that their blood sugar as a type 2 diabetic is out of balance, one or all of those organs have to be really, really looked at in great depth. Um, unfortunately, in our, our current healthcare system, the labs that are run are basically the labs that the insurance company approves, which we know has been less and less over the years. Um, and it's unfortunate to say, but it's almost only the labs that they can drug. So there are a lot of tests that you can look at to see how these organs are functioning, which are never really exposed and uncovered, uh, which leaves a person who is a diabetic just sitting there suffering and dealing with uh, the agony of not knowing why their blood sugar levels are out of control. Um, some diabetics we meet, I mean, they're, they're pounding their head against the ground saying, I, it doesn't make sense. Why are my numbers up? I'm eating good, but my numbers are higher. Uh, some diabetics we meet, they go and they, they, they wake up in the morning and, and their numbers are really high. Their blood sugar numbers are, are through the roof. And the, the patients think to themselves, wait a second, you know, unless I slept, walk to the kitchen and had a big piece of cake or soda, why are my numbers ridiculously high? And it's a very frustrating disease. It's probably one of the most frustrating diseases because you don't really know what all the triggers are. Now, some people do. They eat a big thing of pizza or cake and it goes up. It makes sense. But, um, but that's a, a once in a while scenario. The question is, why is it constantly staying high in spite of the fact that they're being treated with all these medications and, and uh, therapies and such? So, Jonathan, so you say that a lot of these people are not necessarily then stable on the medicines that they're on and they're actually getting these spikes and you know these things going up and down is that is that accurate yeah dr dan i'll tell you one of the things that is a real challenge is that um these patients that we're meeting i'm uh, meeting um are doing everything basically that their doctor's saying now, i'm not saying they're perfect and they can't 
necessarily follow their diet exactly the way they should be. But yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're following their doctor's orders or taking their medication. Uh, you know, maybe some of them are walking, some of them are watching their carbs. And in spite of all the recommendations they get, they get worse over time, not, not better. And it's, it's so frustrating because, you know, when they get first diagnosed, this is kind of the story that occurs for people who are diagnosed as a diabetic. Yeah, take us to that story. Yes, please. Sure. Um, most people on day one that I meet, um, have never known that they were a diabetic. They, they, maybe they didn't have any symptoms. And obviously that makes sense because it's a silent killer, but they didn't notice anything. They didn't have any real uh, noticeable symptoms and they go to their doctor, the doctor runs some blood work. Um, and no sooner before they go into the room, the doctor has this alarming look on their face and says, listen, you know, I'm sorry, sir, ma'am, but I have to let you know you're a diabetic. And no sooner do they say that before the script pad comes out and the first medication is given. It's typically metformin, which is the most prescribed diabetic medication. Uh, there's about 60 million prescriptions a year about on that particular medication. And they say, OK, well, here's a medication. Take this for the rest of your life. I also would like you to lose some weight, uh, go exercise, you know, watch what you eat and I'll see you back here in a few months and we're going to see if it improved or not. And the biggest frustration of this is that even when they follow those recommendations of taking the medication, watching what they eat, most people say, I do watch what I eat. I grab a fork, I put it into a piece of food, I bring it to my mouth and I eat it. I watch the whole thing occur, you know? <laughs> Um, and you know, it's, it's so frustrating. Some of them have, have joined gyms. They've gone to trainers. They do all these things. I, I just, I just wanted to, I just, I just, I got off the phone with a good friend of mine. He's also, he's a podiatrist in Pittsburgh and he was recently, he just told me this about eight months ago, he was diagnosed with diabetes, went to his doctor. Um, the doctor said metformin, exactly what you said, watch your diet. Now he had actually like, he had listened to one of our segments on it's Dr. Gundry who does the diet evolution. So he went on to that diet and put the metformin to the side, went back to the doctor two weeks ago, completely perfect blood studies. Everything was perfect. Wow. And the doctor still said, well, we still need to keep you on metformin. He said, I've never taken it. And <laughs> yep. he said, I'm not going on it. There's, and it's, I'm just laughing because you, it's exactly what just happened. It's crazy. It is. It is absolutely. Uh, it's crazy. I've had, um, and you may have experienced this too, where, you know, um, unfortunately diabetics in this country are treated like a herd. It's a one size fits all approach. And they're given what I call the diabetic cocktail, which is a blood sugar drug such as metformin or, or one of these other medications, a blood pressure drug and a cholesterol drug. And even in spite of some of these patients not having those conditions such as cholesterol issues or blood pressure issues, they still get it. It's almost like it's a one size fits all. It's like you get diagnosed as a diabetic, did three medications. Um, and it is, it's unfortunate. And the biggest problem with this is that in spite of doing that, they're not getting better. Um, you know, the people that wind up taking these medications for blood pressure and cholesterol, well, they still have a high risk of having a heart attack and stroke. I mean, no one ever dies of diabetes. They die of all the other things besides diabetes. Wait, you know, John, I just want to stop you one, one second, Dr. Spade. So I, I had gone to a doctor, I had my blood test done and everything, and the cholesterol was completely normal. And he said, also, I want to put you on a cholesterol medicine. And I said, well, it's, is it normal? And he said, yes, absolutely, it's normal. He said, but, you know, you're in your 50s, and you know, part of <laughs> yeah. our standard is when you hit your 50s. So is that what you see as well? I mean, is that... Is that pretty standard uh, operating procedure? Yeah, it's unfortunate um, that that is unfortunately the standard of our care. And it's it's a very drug based standard of care where it's a pill for every ill. You know, what is it? The average American takes, I think, 11 medications a day. Um, it's it's really unfortunate. And I think what's happening now with the Internet and, and all these other different resources is I think people are wising up. I think. The baby boomers and other generations are sitting there saying, I'd rather get to the cause of the problem than keep treating this thing for the next 30 years. Like most people we meet, they do the math. They say, well, if I take one pill a day for a year, that's 365 pills. If I do that for 10 years, that's 3,650 pills. And if 3,650 pills didn't fix me, I don't think getting to the 4,000, we're going to have some sort of a big parade. And finally, my cholesterol is better, my blood pressure is fixed, and so forth. And so, so you, think we're, do you think we're going away from the stage of just fixing the symptoms where we really want to find out what the cause is and really cure that? Is that, is that the different mentality of this generation? 
I do, and I have proof of it. Um, if I I live really close to a Whole Foods, which is a um, it's a big grocery store which provides a lot of natural and organic, and we would consider more expensive but healthier options for people. And it is packed every day because people are seeing that where healthcare is going is that they're gonna to have to spend money out of pocket. And most patients that I meet are looking and they're saying, well, I'm gonna be spending money out of pocket. I'm either gonna do it to contribute to my health and well being, or I'm gonna be doing it on bills after heart attacks and strokes that the insurance isn't gonna cover. Yeah. And they're seeing, hey, I'm not getting out of not paying. It's just, how do I wanna pay? Do I wanna pay because um, I'm sick and, and now on disability or what have you, or is it that I want to pay because I want to be well and I want to live a quality of life? Like I want to play with my grandkids. I want to walk, you know, my daughter down the aisle. Like that is what people are really searching for. It's that quality of life um, and adding more life to the years that they do have. So I do. Do you, also, do you think they lost some of the confidence in in doctors or in medicine that they had many years ago? I mean, I think they were probably more apt 30 years ago to go to the doctor and just if they said metformin which they didn't have i guess back then but they would have just taken it without the internet research or you know you think there's a difference in just in terms of their ability to accept medicine just because of the uh lack of faith yeah 100 percent, absolutely yeah no i see the same thing i see that. i mean it's really the the reason for the show as well i mean it's one of those things now i have a question for you john what what about uh aspartame and all these diet sweeteners any of the, does that play into the increase in diabetes anything in terms of food substances or the, the way we're eating what we're eating how does that all relate to this you know that's a um it's a great question so yes a lot of this does play a role first off um all the things that are in the funny looking packets the uh you know the pink packets with you know the sweet and low the equal and all those other ones um, many of them have neurotoxic uh, properties to them. So what occurs with these particular items is that they could increase the flare up of a person who's a diabetic. Now, diabetes is known as an inflammatory disease, which means that your body is basically on fire, you know, in a simple way of putting it. So a lot of these things actually stir that up quite a bit. Now, some doctors that I met have said, well, I don't see the inflammation um, and, you know, show me inflammation. The problem is they're not running the right labs to actually look at it. Um, but there is tons of, as a matter of fact, I've never met a diabetic who hasn't had a ton of inflammation and these types of substances definitely increase that. The other piece of it is it does also spike blood sugar levels, um, which is pretty common. And then the other piece of that as well is that there are many diabetics that are eating foods uh, that are darn right, um, they're allergic to, that is actually increasing blood sugar levels. Um, I'll give you a, a quick scenario. I had a patient once, uh, one of my, I would say one of my more severe cases, I, I usually see the more severe cases because people wait till the last minute before they do a more natural approach. You know, they kind of exhaust the medical route first and then they come trying to lead to a different way. But I had a patient once and this person was, was dying. I mean, there's no other simple way of putting it. And they were taking about 100 units of insulin, which for those people that don't know about insulin, insulin is a very, very powerful hormone that uh, even one unit is a lot. One unit could probably kill a person with normal blood sugar levels. Taking 100 units is just out of control. Um, the person grossly obese. I mean, this person was dying. And um, the way we approach things before we accept any patients, because we don't accept all cases, is that we do a full workup on them meaning that we test blood tests, saliva tests, stool tests. I mean, we really search. Dr. Space, just, what, when, you, when you're just a blood test for one second before, before I don't mean to interrupt you, but what tests do you do? Give us just some that would be different than most doctors would do. Like what would we look for that would be outside the norm of, let's say, an SMA-12 or something like that? So great question. So I run a typical panel, which would be um, a CBC, which is a you know complete blood count. I would also do a metabolic panel. Um, I would also do a lipid panel, which is basic cholesterol levels. But in addition to that, I run a lot of other um, inflammatory markers such as uric acid levels, LDH, which is lactic dehydrogenase. Uh, we'll look at ferritin levels. Um, I will look much more comprehensively in terms of like sed rate, which is inflammation. And um, I'm not sure the audience completely, but I don't want to get too technical. But essentially, I run about another 33 more tests than the typical panel. But I'll tell you what's funny, Dr. Dan. 
Blood, believe it or not, is not my most critical test to helping a person who's a diabetic. It's actually saliva. I'll get more information from saliva of how to actually reverse someone's diabetes than from blood. Now, blood will tell me what organs are an issue, such as the thyroid and the liver and so forth, but um, I will get more from that particular test than I usually get from blood. But the way we put it together is everything together really, uh, I, I don't I don't miss it. Let's put it that way. I run so many tests and it's so comprehensive that there's never a question of me figuring out the causes of why their blood sugar levels are an issue, why their cholesterol are an issue, why their blood pressure is an issue and so forth. And Dr. Page, and the giveaway is like you said, it's inflammation. Is that what you're actually recognizing in these different organs and these different blood tests? The inflammation um, is the uh, effect. Um, as I was saying earlier, so I had this patient who was taking all this insulin and he was eating a food every day that was inflaming him. Now, the irony of it is, is that his doctor even recommended, his doctor was sitting there saying, well, you have to take this food and it's really good for you and it's good for your, your, your body and it's good for your cholesterol. And, and he listened to his doctor. Well, I had a hunch that this guy was really allergic to a food. And guess what the food was? It was oatmeal. And every morning he'd wake up and have a bowl of oatmeal and it was organic oatmeal, it was good quality oatmeal, it wasn't a junky product, and be, he was just allergic to it. So every time he ate this food, his blood sugar level would go up 50 points, and his doctor would then give him more insulin. And it's funny because I saw this in a test that I ran on him. Now I'm not saying everybody's allergic to gluten, but or, um, to uh, oatmeal or gluten, but I'm saying on this particular person, it was a major issue. So what was our treatment? Our treatment was discovering, hey, listen, you're really allergic to this food. You got to stop eating it. And what do you know? In less than three months, Dr. Dan, three months, this guy is practically off of all his insulin. Now, that wasn't his only problem, but I'm saying that was a big chunk of what the issue was here. That so crazy. What, yeah. what foods do you typically find people are, are, are giving them a hard time regarding diabetes or allergies and things? You know, because we customize care for every person, there isn't necessarily one food. I'll give you an example. I have, I've all, I mean, I've helped so many patients at this point, but um, I've had some patients that are from the Asian background who they literally can walk by rice, not eat it, but walk by it and their blood sugar level will go up. Um, and then I have others that they, they have a whole bowl of rice and nothing happens. Um, I've had some patients that they eat a banana and their blood sugar level goes up 100 points. I've had others that eat five bananas and, and very little happens. So it really is individual. Um, I mean, a common food I would say that many diabetics should really try to watch out for is definitely corn because corn is just sugar. Um, and I would say the other big culprit is probably gluten, which is um, wheat, uh, which is a big culprit also for people who are diabetic. So uh, many people have those allergies but don't know it. Um, and the testing isn't thorough enough to really see it based on uh, just traditional, you know, practicing a medicine. I, you know, I like that, you know, usually when you speak with doctors, they, they speak of diabetes as sort of not so specific for an individual, but as a generalized thing, like here's diabetes, everyone has it, the cure is going to be the same. No. What you're saying is no, it's very specific to the individual. It is. And that variation is probably or possibly why it's been missed or hasn't been treated that well. What, like, how do you treat the underlying causes of diabetes? What would be some things that you do? Obviously, finding allergies is one of them. What else do you do? Yeah, so our approach, we have three C's to the approach of how we fix um, people with diabetes and, and reverse the disease. The first thing we have to do is basically we grab a patient, we grab them by the ankles, we turn them upside down and we shake them all out. Meaning that I literally try to figure out what are the causes, what are the triggers to this person's blood sugar. So the first C is comprehensive testing, literally test, test, test until we really figure out exactly what is causing the particular disease. Um, the next C is customized care. Customized care in my office looks uh, pretty simple. We make sure we hold them by the hand because it is not simple reversing diabetes. So we make sure we structure a plan where they have enough interaction with me that I can help them along a, a program. Um, the next thing that we do um, is I, I structure a diet, a customized diet for them that's gonna get them results. And then we treat natural. I treat um, with what people consider natural medicine, vitamins, herbs, minerals, Everything I do is geared around research. So um, it is geared around uh, lots of clinical data of what really works. I don't do any, hey, let's try this or let's go grow it in the back and see if you eat it and it works. I mean, it has been tried and true. 
I mean, are there are there certain vitamins or minerals that are notoriously missing in these individuals? Well, the, you know, honestly, uh, we run a special test actually looking at urine, um, which is a very special urine test that actually looks at the depletion that they get from the medication. So the medication depletes a lot, particularly chromium, um, CoQ10, things of that nature. So uh, we do see deficiencies there sometimes. Um, yeah. And then the last C um, to the three C approach is uh, clinical results. That's really probably the biggest um, and most important thing, I mean, I could come and talk about an approach, uh, but if you can't show black and white in a few weeks, someone literally making a 180 on their health, um, and, and that is really the thing. I mean, I'm seeing people walk in full blown diabetic, and sometimes a few months later, Dr. Dan, not even having a clinical sign, doesn't show up in labs, they wouldn't even know they were diabetic if someone, if they walked into a doctor and didn't have a history of them. Um, so it is really remarkable really really well, that's remarkable personal. so that's got to be a great feeling for you just absolutely. being able to get those kind of results absolutely it is um it is incredible and you know the fact that it's not you know mainstream and to some people what they consider controversial makes it even more interesting because you know we're, we're seeing like you know the way i look at how somebody works is results i mean it it's really comes down to it and we have hundreds and hundreds of testimonials verifying, you know, the reversal of diabetes. Um, and yeah, it makes me feel great because these people get their life back. You know, they're they're they're, they're not with that cloud of I'm going to die or go blind or it's it's just a devastating disease. What well, you you spoke of some people coming in with no symptoms, but those that do have symptoms, what are some symptoms of diabetes? So, um, obviously tiredness, that's a common symptom. You'll also see things like weight gain. Um, you know, for men, you'll see, uh, sexual issues, you know, their inability to perform or, uh, have the urge to perform. Uh, you'll see neuropathy, um, which is, you know, numbness and tingling and burning down the legs and hands. Um, you'll sometimes see bloating in the belly, you know, the liver being somewhat inflamed. Um, you know, a lack of motivation to do things in life. And then you see, I don't know if uh, the audience is familiar, but there is such a thing called type three diabetes and type three diabetes is a huge thing. And what that is, is that is neurodegenerative. That's where you're seeing people start showing signs of dementia and Alzheimer's and all these other things being directly linked to blood sugar problems. So this is really the, the bigger factor because, um, you know, diabetes also affects the brain. I mean, it, it affects the, the thing with, with diabetes is it, it makes every other disease you have worse. So if you have heart disease and you have diabetes underneath it, it just makes the heart disease worse. If you have cancer and you have diabetes underneath it, it just makes everything exaggerated. Um, so it's awful. You know, it's your metabolism. It's a broken metabolism that just triggers everything. So, um, yeah, it's devastating. It really is. But something can be done about it. And that's what I think everybody needs to understand is that you can absolutely do something about this particular disease. You just need the right approach and the right plan. And you can really see re remarkable, I mean, I mean, life changing um, results. It is. It's absolutely astonishing what we see. Um, it, it's 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 awesome. It really is. What a great message. What a great message. You know, one of our our, our points of the show is to really look for the holy grail of health. And if I were to pose that question to you, Dr. Spades, what do you consider to be the holy grail of health? I would say the holy grail is, is the following. When you have a serious disease, you need a very comprehensive plan. And what I mean by that is that you really can't um, treat it as if it's a very simple thing. Um, the body is a very complex thing. And you need a very, I don't I want to say complex treatment, but you really need a good structure and a very good plan to, to accomplish beating a disease. We're not talking about, you know, uh, you know, if you have a scraped knee and just, you know, covering it up, we're talking about a disease that affects every single organ of your body that needs a, a very customized clinical approach to getting results. And I think that the, the comprehend, you know, the amount of effort, um, to address a disease like that needs to be addressed and it can't just be treated like, oh, you have a disease that controls everything. Here, just take a pill. Um, that methodology hasn't worked, uh, and I don't see it ever working in the future. So um, I think the holy grail is um, is really a comprehensive plan to getting a person better. Dr. Jonathan Spages, how would people that want to get in touch with you, how would they do so? 
So um, a couple ways. First, um, I have obviously a, a published book and, and a few others, so they could always find that on Amazon. But um, my website is drjonathanspages.com, uh, and that's a, a good way to uh, get in contact with me. Uh, the other thing is we have our phone number, which is 973-523-5252. Um, and we set up people for um, for either seminars that I conduct about this particular topic or uh, once in a while, if they're, if they're able to, they can set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me to look to see if we can help them. What's the name of your book? Uh, it's The Wellness Approach. It's the secrets to health that your doctors are afraid to reveal. So um, it is great. Dr. Jonathan Spages, I'd like to thank you for being on this show, sir. That was very, very awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dan. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. This episode is sponsored by New Jersey Foot and Ankle Center in Oradell, New Jersey. Remember, when you have a foot problem, you've got a foot doctor in the family. Weekend and evening appointments are available. Call us at 201-261-9445. Once again, that's 201-261-9445. 9445. Thanks for listening. Check out the show notes over at drdanspeaks.com. If you're loving the show, head over to iTunes and leave us a review, and we'll catch you next time. This podcast was produced by Slate Media Productions. Voiceovers were provided by Randy Ramos Jr. and Jeremy Ryan Slate. You can find out more if you are looking to get your podcast produced over at slatemediaproductions.com. Chins dot com. Chins dot com. Chins dot